that's fine. Who said that? The Senate will come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators Baisley, Bridges, Senator Bridges, excused. Buckner, Senator Buckner, excused. <clears throat> Coleman, Cutter, Danielson, Exum, Fields, Gardner. Excuse. Janal, Gonzalez, Senator Gonzalez, Hansen, Henriksen, Hawkins Lewis, Kirkmeyer, Senator Kirkmeyer, Senator Kirkmeyer, Kolker, Liston, Lundin, excused, Marchman, Michelson Janay, Malika. Absent. Pelton B. Pelton R. Priola. Rich. Roberts. Rodriguez. Simpson. Smallwood. Sullivan. Van Winkle. Will, Winter, Zenzinger, Senator Zenzinger, Senator Bridges, Mr. President. Here. The morning roll call is 31 present, one absent, three excused. We do have a quorum. Like Senator Kirkmeyer, would you please lead us in the pledge? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. President. Would everyone please stand? Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the journal. Would the Senate poet please approve the journal? Very good. I'm, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. President, the reading of the journal needs to be mystic. It's more than mere words. It needs to be artistic. It's meant to be fun, but my limerick won't be done until it drives everyone crazy and ballistic. So, with that, 
<laughs> With that, Mr. President, I move, the, I would like to have the journal read at length. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I move that the uh, Senate Journal of February 20th, 2024 be approved as corrected by the Secretary. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Will the clerk please add Senator Mullica to the roll? <laughs> Senate Services. February 21, 2024, correctly printed in Senate Bills 161 and 162, Senate Trade Resolutions 9 and 10, Senate Resolution 2. Correctly engrossed Senate Bill 66, 103, and 128. Correctly engrossed Senate Bill 22. Committee reports. February 20, 2024, Committee on Business, Labor, and Technology. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. Senate Bill 75 be amended as follows and is so amended be referred to the Committee on Appropriations with favorable recommendation. Third reading of bills, consent calendar. Will the clerk please read the title of the bill on the consent calendar? Senate Bill 128 by Senators Henriksen and Pelton B, Representatives Bradley and McLaughlin, concerning the repeal of an obsolete provision that required the Department of Transportation to make recommendations to the General Assembly by 2011. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of Senate Bill 128 on third reading of bills consent calendar. Is there any discussion? See none. The motion is the passage of Senate Bill 128 on third reading of bills. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 32 ayes, zero no, zero absent, three excuse, Senate Bill 128 is passed. Co-sponsors. Third reading of bills, final passage. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 66? Senate Bill 66, Senator, by Senator Sullivan and Representatives Froelich and Mabry, concerning a requirement that certain businesses with relationships with firearms merchants use the appropriate merchant category code. Will the clerk please add Senator Buckner to the roll? Senator Sullivan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I move uh, Senate Bill 66 on third reading and final passage and ask for an aye vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 66. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Rich, Smallwood, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Pelton B, Pelton R, Simpson, Roberts. With a vote of 22 ayes, 11 noes, 0 absent, 2 excused, Senate Bill 66 is passed. <laughs> Co-sponsors, Senators, Exum. Gonzalez, Majority Leader Rodriguez, Hansen, Colker, Winter, Danielson, Fields, Buckner, Michelson Janae, Cutter, Jaquez Lewis, Bridges, Coleman. Please add the president. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 103. Senate Bill 103 by Senators Pelton B. and Janal, Representative McLaughlin, concerning technical changes to Colorado Department of Labor and Employment Statutes. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move Senate Bill 24-103 for third and final passage. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 103. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent, two excused, Senate Bill 103 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Priola. General orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar, Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for consideration of general orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion is adopted and the Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general order, second reading of bills, consent calendar, and Senator Mullica will take the chair. Okay. The committee will come to order and the coat rule is relaxed. Will the clerk read the title of all bills on the general order's second reading consent calendar? Senate Bill 89 by Senator Enriquez concerning the Colorado Firefighter Heart Cancer and Behavioral Health Benefits Trust. Senate Bill 138 by Senator Simpson and Representative Martinez concerning the modification of the salary categorization of locally elected officers in specified counties. Senate Bill 23 by Senators Van Winkle and Bridges, Representatives Kip and Taggart concerning the requirement that local taxing jurisdictions hold harmless vendors that rely on erroneous data and certain electronic systems related to sales and use tax that are managed by the Department of Revenue. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, there has been a request to remove Senate Bill 23 from the third reading consent count second reading consent calendar. It will move to the regular seconds to the end of the calendar. On that, Mr. Chair, I move for the adoption of all the bills, the two bills on the consent calendar and the associated committee reports, which includes Senate Bill 89 and Senate Bill 138. And there are no committee reports. Is there any discussion on any of the bills on the consent calendar? The motion before the body is the adoption of all bills on the general order second reading bills consent calendar. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the bills are adopted. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion is for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. All opposed, no. The ayes have it and the motion is adopted. The committee will rise and report. The Senate will come to order. Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has had a number of bills under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? February 21, 2024. Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report it has had under consideration the following attached bills, being the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bills 89 and 138 passed on second reading and ordered engrossed in place on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 33 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 2 excused, the Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. Senate Bill 89 and Senate Bill 138 passed in second reading order in gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. General order, second reading of bills, Senator Mullica. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for consideration of general order, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general order, second reading of bills, and Senator Mollica will take the chair. about it what you exactly wanted okay thank you <laughs> The committee will come to order and the quote rule is relaxed. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 93? Senate, Senate Bill 93 by Representative, excuse me, by Senator Michelson Janay concerning the continuity of health care benefits during the transition to a new health benefit plan when the enrollee's health care provider does not have a contract with the new health insurance carrier. Senator Michelson Janay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 93 and the committee report. To the committee report, Senator Michelson Janay. Um, in health and insurance, we moved an amendment to um, bring the bill closer to what we were trying to do. Is there any discussion on the committee report? Senator Michael Sinjane, you already did that. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the adoption of the Health and Human Services Committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those no? The ayes have it. The Health and Human Services Committee report is adopted. There is an amendment on the desk. Senator Michael Sunjane. I move Amendment L005. Will the clerk please read Amendment L005? Amendment L005, amend printed bill page 4, line 15, strike continuing care. Senator Michael Sunjane. Um, thank you. Uh, so we had a couple of amendments that were requested by Senator Smallwood that would bring this bill into um, a better form. Uh, I invite Senator Smallwood to maybe address both five and six. Senator Michael Sinjane, before we do that, would you like to move Amendment L005? Yes, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I did. I move Amendment L005. That is a proper motion. Any further discussion on Amendment L005? Senator Smallwood. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to the uh, good senator for bringing this amendment. This is something we discussed in the Health and Human Services Committee. Um, senator Smallwood, give me one sec. <laughs> Members, we are on seconds. Please have the attention to the well. Senator Smallwood. I think particularly it's senators like in the corner over here. I can hear, I can hear a lot of noise coming from the corner. I don't know if it's mostly just senators or ex-senators or former senators. Or... This is riveting stuff. All right, to the amendment. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Smallwood. Mr. Chair, thank you so much for that. So I uh, appreciate the good senator uh, bringing Amendment L005. If this one passes, we'll talk about L006 also. But um, we'll, I'll spend some time with the bill, but... In short, what we're trying to make sure in Amendment 5 is that uh, the balance uh, billing pro uh, prohibition that the bill was supposed to bring seemed to um, spend a lot of time talking about uh, health care uh, providers, physicians, but it didn't really address facilities. So Amendment 5 simply uh, loops in the enforcement for facilities as the uh, introduced bill did for physicians and would ask for your eye vote. 
Is there any, is there any further discussion on Amendment L005? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L005. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Amendment L005 is adopted. There is an amendment at the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment L006? Amendment L006, amend printed. Senator Michelson, Janae. I move Amendment L006. That is a proper motion. Senator Michelson, Janae. Um, Senate L006 works around confidentiality regarding pre authorization of treatment. It also came from a request from Senator Smallwood. I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on Amendment L006? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L006. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Amendment L006 is adopted. Senator Michael Sinjane. Um, so Senate Bill 93 creates a program by which people who are removed from Medicaid can have some consistent coverage while they move to their new insurance. This already happens in um, private insurance. If you are changing your insurer, you have 90 days to um, use your old providers while you make your way to new providers. This is doing this for Medicaid. We are in the middle of a giant unrolling, um, and so there are a lot of people that this will benefit, and I hope that you will vote aye. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 93? Senator Smallwood. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, and if I could, Mr. Chair, we are on the bill itself, correct? Yes. Um, so, uh, colleagues, um, I'm urging an I vote on Senate Bill 93. I just want to provide my perspective on it because, as you probably know, I'm not necessarily famous for um, standing here and telling you that we should tell insurance companies what to do, particularly in the healthcare space. So, um, they. This bill, in my opinion, is able to successfully thread that needle between um, not being too intrusive when it comes to the um, health care providers, be that the commercial market or um, Medicaid, um, but really some common sense protection for patients. So I like the way the bill was pretty narrowly crafted, and I draw your attention to um, what needs to happen in order for a patient to be able to um, kind of have this portability of not only um, uh, physicians, doctors, um, but also facilities. And so um, if you look at page two, um, this transferring enrollee, so we're, we're identifying the, the person basically that this law is going to apply to, and we've got letters A, B, C, D, E, talking about somebody who is um, currently undergoing a course of treatment for a serious complex medical condition who, or who is undergoing course of inpatient care, meaning they're currently inpatient as a patient. C is pregnant and undergoing a course of treatment for the pregnancy by that provider or facility. D is terminally ill, um, which um, is actually defined, so not using a loose definition of terminally ill or E is scheduled, meaning there's something already on the calendar to undergo an elective surgery from the providers and facilities that we were addressing before in the amendment. So really what we're saying is that for a limited period of time, so call it 90 days, and 90 days only, a patient has the right to continue to see their own doctor, to continue to see their own hospital, but again, only when meeting these criteria. So um, again, shout out to uh, the bill sponsor and appreciate her working with me on this. I think this uh, is narrowly crafted enough to where if you uh, have ever been a patient in, in such a situation or have known a patient in such a situation to be six, seven, eight months pregnant, for example, and find out that because something happened within your health plan or within your Medicaid eligibility that you now get to go find a new doctor or find a new hospital this late in the process um, is, I think, infuriating for um, many of us and would ask for your eye vote on Senate Bill 93. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 93. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the bill is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 25? 
Senate Bill 25 <clears throat> by Senators Bridges and Van Winkle and Representative Skip and Taggart concerning local government sales and use taxes administered by the Department of Revenue and in connection therewith revising, modernizing, and harmonizing various state statutes relating to the state administration of local sales and use tax into one <clears throat> uniform statute. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 25 and the Finance Committee report. To the Finance Committee report. Good report. Vote yes. Is there any further discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Senate Finance Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The committee report is adopted. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This will be my comments on all these bills. These came from the Sales and Use Tax Simplification Task Force. A uh, lot of words, uh, good uh, uh, abbreviation sets. We are making taxes easier to pay across the state. Uh, most of these should have been on the consent calendar. There was some miscommunication uh, about which bills to pull off. We will have an amendment on 23. But these are good bills, bipartisan bills, thoroughly vetted. Ask for an aye vote on all of them. Senator Van Winkle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure you can't wait to get these out of the Senate chamber. <laughs> um, Mr. Chair, well, this bill simply simplifies and streamlines administration of local government sales and use taxes administered by the Department of Revenue. I ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 25? Seeing none, the question before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 25. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the bill is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 24? Senate Bill 24 by Senators Bridges and Van Winkle and Representatives Kip and Taggart concerning the standardization of local lodging tax and in connection therewith, aligning reporting requirements related to remittance of a local lodging tax to reporting requirements for the remittance of other local taxes. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 24 and the Finance Committee report. To the committee report. The committee did very good work with lots of stakeholders, including local governments, and I ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion on the Senate Finance Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the Finance Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it, and the committee report is adopted. To the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And what this bill does, it allows, it's sponsored again by the Sales and Use Tax Simplification Task Force, it makes clear that local taxing jurisdictions cannot require additional reporting information that's not part of the tax return or other normal tax return, such as traveler trends, demographics, and other overly burdensome things above and beyond the taxes themselves that lead to delays in the payments to local governments. And I ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 24? Senator Hansen. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and a question for the sponsors. Uh, just want to make sure I understand who can get information if they want it. Right now, as I read the bill, only home rule cities are able to do that under the current language of the bill. And I was just trying to understand why not allow all types of municipalities, not just the home rule cities, to be able to request information. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And that actually is a very good question. It is something that we did take up in the Finance Committee and through the stakeholder process. And one of the bills that were in the Finance Committee report, or one of the amendments, was L002, which narrowed the bill to apply only to those taxing jurisdictions collecting their own lodging tax. So counties and special marketing districts' lodging taxes are currently collected by the state and distributed back already. So they are essentially exempt from the bill because the state's already um, collecting those. This specifically only to those taxing jurisdictions that do their own lodging tax. Hopefully Senator, that helps. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd, I'd add that we did already take those folks out of the bill, so this bill already doesn't apply to uh, non-home rules. So it's really just a bill about home rules, so that is what the amendment uh, that we put in in committee focuses on. Senator Hansen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I very much appreciate both those responses from the sponsors. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm wondering why we wouldn't want to include the non-home rural cities uh, and their ability to access information from platforms. I don't really see why that should be uh, disallowed. And so, uh, you know, I guess I got a clear answer from the sponsors and, and we can take it from there. Uh, but that's my, really my biggest hesitation with Senate Bill 24. Senator Bridges. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not disallowed, just simply not explicitly allowed, because again, this bill is about home rules. Ask for an I vote. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'd, I'd also add that they can ask for whatever information they would like to ask for. This is specifically on the tax return itself and on the actual specific tax forms themselves. Um, all that other stuff in audits and things like that would need to be separate, is all. So I ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 24? Seeing none, the question before the body is the passage of Senate Bill 24. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Senate Bill 24 is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 23. Senate Bill 23 by Senators Van Winkle and Bridges, Representatives Kip and Taggart, concerning the requirement that local taxing jurisdictions hold harmless vendors that rely on erroneous data in certain electronic systems related to sales and use tax that are managed by the Department of Revenue. Senator Van Winkle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 23 and the Finance Committee report. To the committee report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And to the committee report, I do have an amendment, and so I will move L003. There is an amendment at the oh. desk. We adopt okay. It. Let's adopt the Finance Committee report first, and then we'll move to the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Thank Is you, there Mr. any further discussion? Or, do you want to talk about the committee report, Senator Van no, Winkle? Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the Finance Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the committee report. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The Finance Committee report is adopted. There is an amendment at the desk. Will the clerk please read the title to Amendment L003? Well, the, well, yeah, L003. Amendment L003, amend the Finance Committee report dated February 15, Senator 2024. Van uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a very highly technical amendment. It simply adds one word into the first line of the bill, um, and that word is amend. Is there any discussion on Amendment L003? Senator Gonzalez. Senator Gonzalez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to sever Amendment L003 oh, is... after the period in line two. And um... <laughs> I think we're going to need a senatorial five, Senator Gonzalez. <laughs> this is an outrage, Mr. Chair. <laughs> outrage. Oh! <laughs> I ask for an I vote on both parts of the amendment. We will come back to order, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. You know, severing an amendment is always in order, and there's no subtle question in the Senate. But touche. Yes, please continue, Senator Gonzalez. <laughs> but seeing that this is just adding one word, <laughs> I withdraw my motion to sever. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated, Senator Gonzalez. Senator Van Winkle, do you have another motion? Yeah. Senator Van Winkle. Uh, I reaffirm my original motion to adopt L003. That is a proper motion. Is this a true amendment? Senator Bridges. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. This is an amendment okay. that we would like to put into the bill. That is why it was pulled off the consent calendar. Uh, we had a miscommunication about which bill to pull off for 24. The previous bill would also have been on the consent calendar. You would have missed that excellent discussion that we just had uh, with Senator Hansen. And so please, please, yes on this extraordinarily technical amendment to 23 that simply ensures that the amendment does not replace, but adds. I ask for an I vote on the amendment to Senate Bill 23. And we're just having so much fun today, aren't we? Uh, we are seeing no further <laughs> comments on Amendment L003, nor will any be allowed. So the question before us uh, is the adoption of Amendment L003. No, All those no. in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. And Amendment L003 is adopted as is. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also will reaffirm my motion for a yes vote on this bill. It simply holds harmless businesses that are trying to pay the proper taxes 
They get instructions from the Department of Revenue exactly how to pay those taxes and how much to pay, and they follow those instructions precisely. And if there is an error in the information they received department of, from the Department of Revenue, uh, then they are held harmless because they did everything that, to their best ability, uh, to pay the proper amount of taxes on time. I ask for a yes vote. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Briefly, we have an insane system of sales and use tax in this state with literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different kinds of overlapping areas. Uh, and this system makes it easy on businesses to figure out what it is that they owe in sales and use tax. We are simplifying that, and that is uh, an effort we've been working on for years and will may continue uh, to need work on. As for an I vote on this bill. See, is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 23? Seeing, <laughs> seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 23. All those in favor say aye. aye. Uh, all those opposed, no. Senate Bill 23 is adopted. Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion before the committee is to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee will rise and report. I was reading as fast as I can to see if there was anything about seven. That I could <laughs> Is it? The Senate will come to order. Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has met and had a number of bills under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? February 21st, 2024, Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report it has had under consideration the following attached bills being the second reading thereof and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 93 is amended, Senate Bill 25 is amended, Senate Bill 24 is amended, and Senate Bill 23 is amended, passed on second reading and ordered in gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Okay. Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the committee of the whole report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent, to excuse, the Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. <laughs> Senate Bill 93 is amended, Senate Bill 25 is amended, Senate Bill 24 is amended, Senate Bill 23 is amended, passed on second reading and ordered in gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the consideration of resolutions uh, SJR 009 and SJ and S Senate Resolution 002 lay over until Monday, February 26th. The motion is to lay over the consideration of resolutions, which includes Senate Joint Resolution 9 and Senate Resolution 2, until Monday, February 26th. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted, and those resolutions will lay over until Monday. Consideration of governor's appointments, consent calendar. Will the clerk please read all of the appointments listed on the consent calendar? Member of the Groundwater Commission for term expiring May 1, 2027, Todd Denning of Kingsburg, Colorado, to serve as a representative of the Lost Creek designated groundwater basin and resident agricultural list appointed. Members of the State Board of Land Commissioners effective July 1, 2023, for terms expiring June 30, 2027, Josephine W. Heath of Boulder, Colorado, to serve as a representative of public primary secondary education and as a Democrat reappointed, Christine 
Christy Marie Scanlon of Keystone, Colorado, to serve as a representative of local government and land use planning and as a Democrat reappointed. Member of the Board of Commissioners of Veterans Community Living Centers for terms of expiring July 1, 2027. Patricia Hammond of Eagle, Colorado, to serve as a veteran and designee of the State Board of Veterans Affairs and a Democrat appointed. John Freeberg of Wright, Colorado, to serve as a veteran and a Republican appointed. Leah McMahon of Denver, Colorado, to serve as the State Long-Term Care Ombudsman and a Democrat reappointed. Member of the Health Insurance Affordability Enterprise Board for term expiring September 24, 2024, Saskia Young, Westminster, Colorado, a representative of a statewide association of health benefit plans, occasioned by the re resignation of a man of Massey of Centennial, Colorado, appointed. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the confirmation of all the appointments listed on the consent calendar, which includes Todd Denning of Keensburg for the, for the Groundwater Commission, uh, Josie, Josephine W. Heath of Boulder, Christine Marie Scanlon of Keystone to the State Board of Land Commissioners, Patricia Harmon of Eagle, John Freeberg of Rye, Leah McMahon, McMahon of Denver to the Board of Commissioners of Veteran Community Living Centers, and Saskia Young of Westminster to the Health Insurance Affordability Enterprise Board. Is there any discussion? Senator Rich. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask that the uh, consideration for the State Board of Land Commissioners be taken off of the consent calendar. The appointments for the uh, land board will be separated and will be a separate motion. We will We will, we will proceed to vote on the remaining uh, appointments that are on the consent calendar, which is everything that the majority leader mentioned that is on your calendar, except for the commissioners for the land board. The motion is the confirmation of all of the appointments that are still on the consent calendar. Are there any no votes? With 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent, two excused. The appointments are confirmed. Consideration of governor's appointments continued. Will 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 the clerk please read the appointments, the governor's appointments. Members of the State Board of Land Commissioners effective July 1, 2023 for terms expiring June 30, 2027. Josephine W. Heath of Boulder, Colorado to serve as a representative of public primary secondary education and as, as a Democrat reappointed. Christy Marie Scanlon of Keystone, Colorado to serve as a representative of, lo of local government and land use planning and as a Democrat reappointed. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, it is my honor to uh, move for the appointment of Josephine W. Heath and Christy Marie Scanlon to serve as members of the State Board of Land Commissioners. Is there any discussion? Senator Rich. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my reason for asking that this not be on the consent calendar is the makeup of this commission with the appointment of these two individuals the uh, board composition would be four Democrats, one unaffiliated and two Republican. That doesn't seem very uh, balanced to me, and I'm asking for a no vote. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you to the good senator for Grand Junction. I'll remind uh, the good senator and the body, these are reappointments. Both Ms. Scanlon and Ms. Heath have been serving on the state land board, so there is no change in the composition with their appointments. 
both uh, did excellent jobs in their committee hearing last week and received unanimous approval from our committee. I ask for an aye vote. The motion is the confirmation of the appointments to the land board. Are there any? Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Baisley, Rich, Liston. With a vote of 29 ayes, four no, zero absent, two excuse, the appointments are confirmed. The following change in bill sponsorship will occur. Senator Winter will replace Senator Hawkes Lewis as a joint prime sponsor on Senate Bill 32. Announcements. Senator Michelson Janae. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Uh, hello, today, members, I rise to ask you to join me in a tribute to the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, and we have guests if they could stand while I'm reading their, it, their thing. Um, uh, he, we have a tribute today that says, the members of the Colorado Senate commend the SCFD for more than 35 years of connecting the public to arts, culture, and scientific experiences. Your steadfast support and mission to ensure unparalleled levels of access for Colorado residents, offering thousands of free and discounted activities each year and educational outreach to 3.8 million students each year is a model of civic leadership and community impact. The 300 diverse arts and cultural organizations funded by the voter-created SCFD contributed $2.6 billion in total economic activity in the Denver metropolitan area and provided nearly 14,000 jobs in 2022. Equally important, these organizations provided 12.9 million people attending events in person with a moment of pure wonder. With the SCFD as their foundation, the organizations providing cultural access in the region are the very are the envy of communities across the nation. Focused on culture for all, the SCFD continues to be a shining example of how things that unite us are far greater than those that divide us. So I, I would like to welcome our guests here today. Um, if you could give them a round of applause from SCFD. And just to say that um, I sing or sang with a choir that gets SCFD funding, um, the Colorado Hebrew Chorale, and I'm so grateful for how far, they're a tier three, I'm so grateful for how far your funding goes in our communities and reaches even the smallest of organizations so that cultural um, arts can be shared vastly. Thank you. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. And members, today is their day at the Capitol, so you can join the SCFD. Uh, art, music, science will once again fill the halls of the Colorado State Capitol in celebration of culture for all. And you can experience some interactive exhibits today uh, in the north and west foyer from 10 to 11.30. There will be pastries and beverages, and we will be joined by a number of different organizations, including the Denver Museum. Museum of Nature and Science, and they will have their giant puppet marionettes, Mr. Bones, uh, will be here. Also, representatives from Mudra Dance and the Filipino American Community of Colorado. The pink SCFD bear mascot will be here. A bald eagle, owls, and hawks from Hawk Quest will be here, and you can get your picture taken with them. Also, the Colorado Photographic Arts Center's Creative Capital Exhibition is here. Uh, the historical reenactors from the Broomfield Veterans Museum, which is a fantastic museum if you have an opportunity to go. And then uh, Cherry Arts and their mobile art cart, uh, where you'll be able to uh, screen print a complimentary bag. Uh, 
So um, please uh, join us for all of those activities. And then also I would just like to add my congratulations. Uh, in a way, the SCFD is slightly responsible for me being here today because I first started off uh, in my community as a board member for the Arvada Center for the Arts and Humanities, a cultural gem in my community. And that was my first uh, municipal experience, uh, which then led me on my pathway to becoming a city council member. So, uh, thank you for everything that you do, uh, in particular in promoting the arts in our state. It's uh, truly an amazing organization, and we're very pleased to have you here. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, out of all the facilities, I feel like there's a particular Senate district that has the best ones. And so I just want to point out the Denver Zoo, and many others. No, but we want to say thank you so much for what you do. That was a key piece of my upbringing, being able to grow up and have access to that. I grew up in Park Hill, not too far from the zoo and other facilities. So thank you for continuing to make it available and accessible for so many people. We appreciate you. Thank you. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for another moment of personal privilege. Yeah. Granted. Yes. Awesome. Um, so there is another group of folks that I wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity to recognize today. Uh, Shift 23 uh, is a fellowship of high school students from across the metro area who serve in FaithBridge, an organization, to co-create policies on, to influence practices and personnel in ways that will ensure equity for all people served by, uh, by and serving in our public schools. We have a couple of folks who are here on the Senate floor with us uh, just to recognize, and I ask that they just stand up and be recognized in the back corner. Uh, we have Vernon Jones, Maya Mormon, Jessica, Jessica Escalante, uh, and Larry Phillips Thomas, and uh, we can only recognize folks who are actually on the floor. I'm not saying there might be other folks who are somewhere within this chamber, but I'm recognizing the folks who are here on the floor and maybe other people who may be somewhere else in the chamber, so let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Senator Coleman, I'm not saying I am, <laughs> but I might be fining you a dollar. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm more than, more than happy to pay the fine. I didn't say I was. I just said I might. Thank be, you for that. Potentially. One last announcement. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. One last announcement. Uh, Senate State Veteran Military Affairs Committee uh, will be meeting uh, 15 minutes after Senate Health and Human Services Committee starts, and that is to hear uh, Senate Bill 157 uh, in the old Supreme Court. Thank you. Senator Zensinger. Thank you, Mr. President, may I have a moment of personal privilege? Granted. Uh, members, I'm very pleased to be able to welcome here today the uh, members of the, the Jefferson County Business Lobby who are here with us um, celebrating their day at the Capitol. The JCBL is the united voice of Jeffco Businesses at the Colorado State Capitol, and they've been very busy analyzing and, and lobbying on legislative proposals that may impact our county. And I just wanted to uh, call your attention to them today. Uh, they will be roaming the Capitol halls and they would love to discuss with you some uh, very important business policies. So welcome and enjoy your day at the Capitol. Senator Buckner. Mr. President, may I have a moment of personal privilege? Granted. Granted. Um, I have some special guests here today. Um, for Youth Mental Health Action Day, which is crucial. Um, I would like to introduce Dr. Bo Karubia, who is a physician at Children's Hospital in Anschutz. Could you please stand? And two of my constituents are here as well, which is really a thrill for me, Aubrey Voiles and Sharla Rhodes. So welcome to the State Senate, and thank you for the work you do with mental health, because that is so crucial. So thank you for being here today. And now I have an announcement. <laughs> um, Senate Education Committee will be meeting today at 1.30 in room 357. We have some board reappointments and we'll be hearing Senate Bill 143 and 113. Thank you. Senator Zenzinger, back again. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I have an announcement. Decorum has finally entered the Senate chamber, and that would be Senator Don Corum. Welcome back to the Senate, Senator Corum. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Senator Fields. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues. Members of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee, we're going to meet upon adjournment that will be in about 15 minutes, so that will be 1015. And we have uh, three bills for consideration. Thank you. Senator Winter. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of Transportation and Energy, we are meeting at 1.30 for two appointments, uh, which should go fairly quickly. I look forward to seeing you there. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues uh, who serve on judiciary, Today we will be meeting at 1.30 in the old Supreme Court as a joint Judiciary Committee uh, to hear the um, Sex Offender Management Board's prison treatment report. And then after that concludes, we anticipate that that'll be somewhere around 3.30-ish. Um, upon that adjournment of our joint Judiciary hearing, we will then transition over to um, hear two different bills as the Senate Judiciary Committee, Senate Bill 35 followed by Senate Bill 11. In that order, we will still be in old Supreme Court, but we will um, bid adieu to our colleagues in the House. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee, we're going to meet at 1015. Uh, upon adjournment, 1015 upstairs, we have House Bills 1047 and 1048. And then one other announcement, if you all are looking for lunch plans, there's some delicious food will be served by the Colorado Event Alliance at 1 o'clock, so a late lunch uh, down in the West Foyer uh, by the Colorado Event Alliance. Thanks. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate recess until 12 o'clock today. Colleagues, you do not need to return. We'll just be reading some things over the desk. Uh, and that's the motion. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the Senate will recess until 12 PM today. Thank you.